lot of misconceptions, myths, lack of information exists on the choice of which family planning can women and families use. Is there a reason that you've never explored using other forms of contraceptives? I think we are because of the reason we are They give them those serious names. No, no, I am not. It's not for my age group. There is no contraceptives that fits everyone. Ensure you go to a youth-friendly clinic. Discuss. Be provided with a variety of what we have, and they select the best. And this is Real Talk. Birth control, contraceptives, family planning, all choice words used to describe an essential service in today's healthcare, especially so for women. But still, a lot of misconceptions, myths, lack of information exist on the choice of which family planning can women and families use. So in today's show, we'll be getting real on this topic. I have guests, I have experts, so stick around. Welcome to Real Talk. I just prefer using condoms. I'm 21 years old. It's day to me I need contraceptive. Okay, Lini Hart, and at the end of the day, Mimi honestly says the end of Hosi Kuli's advice. Thanks for tuning in. In this show, we'll be getting real on the use of contraceptives and what you need to know. My guests will be sharing their experiences or lack of for some of them. And also, I have experts who will be putting this into perspective, hoping that you will watch this show and actually learn a thing or two. Well, right now, please help me introduce my first guest. Angela, welcome to Real Talk. So probably tell me, as mm -hmm. a young woman, yeah. uh, why do you believe that it's something that you should use? Yeah, for, for me, I believe it's something that you should use as a woman because the main aim of you to use a contraceptives mainly is to prevent unwanted pregnancies. So at my age right now, I'm not ready to be a mother. So that's why um, I'll advise and advise, I advise myself too to use contraceptives. Have you been in a situation where you've had a scare? Yeah, I have been in a situation where I had a scare. And you are using now your choice me method of contraceptive. But so what was it like when you were thinking, am I pregnant? Am I not pregnant? I remember I, I used a condom and uh, my periods, they, they were late. Um, I, was, I was expecting them in a certain week and they did not come. So I was so worried and uh, I did a test and it, it was negative. So I was like, there's, there's nothing to worry about. Sometimes during the weathers or food, they might affect your hormones. And as a lady, your period times might change. Okay. Yeah. So is there a reason that you've never explored using other forms of contraceptives? No, no much reason. Just, I just prefer using condoms. So, you, and I was told that you believe that the pills, the injections, that is not for you. <laughs> I think because of the pills, the pills, the IUDs, so they, they give them those serious names. Na mimi kama dem, niki feel naenda kukununua, no na ayapana, it's not for my age group, you see. So, the serious names that they have given them. What do you mean it's not for your age group? They're okay. too serious. For me, they're too serious. Okay, I'm yeah. curious. Walk, walk me through when you were younger. Uh -huh. How did that conversation where your parents or your guardians now tell you, you know what, now you're a big girl, you've got in your periods, yeah. uh, you have to be careful. How did that conversation happen for you? Um, it started when the first time I started bleeding, I was in the house with my dad alone. And uh, a cancer like... So he was so shocked and uh, he didn't know even who to contact. So my cousin came and talked to me. And now from that day, my mom started talking to me from this day. Make sure when you have sex, use, use a condom. 
they were not telling me other methods. of course, the disclaimer methods. to yeah. wait until marriage yeah. to have yeah. sex. Yeah. They were cautioning first abstain. If it's a master makama mwili tu imetaka, to me are contraceptives. Mm. So your parents had the contraceptives talk with you? Yes, they did. So what's, what, what sort of contraceptives did they talk to you about? They told me about the pills, the no plants, and uh, condoms still. Uh, were you, was your mom aware? No. But as a woman, I know she noticed. Yeah. I, all of us will just start behaving differently. Mm -hmm. She just noticed. So and she did not have you ever thought that. perhaps to have the conversation with mom? Like, mm. so how can I ensure that I'm able to have a proper family planning method in place? No, I've not, but I've shared with some of my older friends who can advise me, but not directly my mom. So within your age group, a yeah. lot of your older friends, are they also using the same as you or they are now using the other forms of contraceptions? They are using other forms of contraceptions, with which are nor plant and the IUD. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I want to introduce my next guest, who is Stella Caviti. Stella is 21, and like Angela, she also believes that, you know, the pills, kudungwa injections, ah, you see, I'm to mianka mamimi, that is for the wamade. Please help me welcome her to the show. Karibu kwenye Real Talk. Fante. So you're saying that, like Angela, mm. your preferred choice of contraceptive is the condom. But you're saying that right now you're, you're getting to a stage whereby you'd want to explore other options. Why yeah. is that? Um, I believe with the experience that I've been through, uh, for as a lady and as a woman, it's high time to explore more why. Um, I need to look for some methods that are long term to assist me in Perhaps building my dreams. Yeah. Julazima ujiweke kwa mpango. Yeah. So have you ever had a scare that now got you thinking like, okay, what I'm on is not enough. Mm. I need to beef up the security. Yeah. Um, I guess at the most upper, kuna wenye wako scared kama sai. You have much to achieve as a lady. And uh, unapige sabu ya, eh, I'm not going to get pregnant at this stage. And unajua, perhaps lab the condom, see 99% effective. So in a bit, we explore for another option. Actually, the only 100% effective way, or should I say contraceptive, is abstinence. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe on that, did anyone ever have the conversation with you as a young woman that now probably you're in this stage of life, we know you're dating, umefungua duka. So has anyone, perhaps your mom or anyone in your family, ever had that conversation with you? Um, I'll say in a normal African setting, uh, my mom used to issue threats like, then I'm, I was like, oh, I'm so scared, I can't go on. But eventually, Ilifika points that you need to explore. So my mom was not on the front line to educate me. I'd say I got the education via high school. So your uh, friends yeah. in high school, yeah. they were talking about sex, mm. contraceptives. Mm. We usually had peer educators that came into the schools, and um, they used to give us knowledge on sexual reproductive health. So from that point, I guess it's the point where I got to know more. So that empowered you. So at Sazilo Ulianza Kufungwa Duka, Ikakwa Sasa, okay, at least I have some tips on my hands. Yeah. Okay. Do you, would you say, and this is to the both of you, would you say that, especially for the young adults, that's uh, ages between 18 to 22, mm -hmm. that girls are more scared of pregnancy mm -hmm. than even HIV, other forms of STIs? Yeah. So girls are actually scared of getting pregnant rather than HIV. Unapata mtuka mimi, Sunday mini present worship leader, I'm a youth in the leading the youth group in church. So right now when I say I'm pregnant, what will the church mom say about me? What will the pastor himself say about me? And what will my family members who know about me and my career, what will they say about me? So most we fear about our status. Itarudichini. The pregnancy is the issue. Because the pregnancy now is an outward sign. I'll bring in Bahati Hezbon. He's 26. He's a guy. He is married, father of one. And as a man, he's saying that, Tamima, I feel that I need to know more about contraceptives, especially on behalf of my wife, so that we can be able to plan our family. Please help me welcome him to the show.
So, husband. You tell me more. Uh, well, my experience is very nice. Uh, being a father, uh, at least uh, maybe the Baba at a very young age. Uh, Nikona mtoto, a girl to be specific. And it was Lilian Troideno Mizawadi. And uh, yeah. So you mentioned that uh, is your wife presently on contraceptives? Yeah, she is. Which which one do you know? Anatomia Tembe. Anatomia Tembe. Yes. So today you would want to know more about other forms of contraceptives. Why do you think it's important for you as a man to be part of that discussion? Uh, for me, it's important because one, Saina is a samanikona wana wake oil konyumba. And it's important for my daughter to know more about this and my wife uh, to, to like explore so that to as a kujipanga. Uh, you realize before ilikona threats mingi sana about HIV, about uh, maybe California uh, kupata mimba na maybe angefukuzwa kwetu na nini. So nili have to explore. For us it was a good one. But then you realize kuna majukumu after hapo. So singependa pia kuongeza mtoto mwingine kabla Troy aja, aja grow plus ku complicate pia issues za mama yake ambaye ni Tyra. Yeah. So cuz babies are expensive. Fact. Anyone who has kids knows that kids kids are expensive. It's an investment. Okay. So I want to open it up to the floor to my audience. And let me start with the ladies. Watu wangapi hapa kwenye audience hawa to me any form of contraceptive? Show of hands. I saw a hand there. Can we hear from you? Okay, I have one kid. I'm 21 years old. So to me any contraceptive. The kid that you have at 21, yeah. do you think that it is because you had the lack of information on contraceptives? Because I was scared of using the contraceptive. What do you mean when you say you were scared of using the contraceptive? Okay, people used to say that Kutumia nini hizo mustaf sipwa. Sipwa mbona? Zikona effects. Kama gani? Okay. Kuna friend of, kuna rafiki yangu fulani. Apo hivi home. Ye utumia implant. So. Ye unyesha. Ye unyesha sana. So she bleeds heavily? Yeah, heavily. So we uka ogopa? So nika ogopa. Yeah. And that's why you're here today, because you also want to I learn want to from this know, conversation. Yeah. I want to know more about So I want to invite our expert in studio. I have with me Dr. Frederick uh, Karithia. I also have with me Dr. Aumo Adipo, who are both, uh, they're both obstetricians. And I just want them to answer the two questions that have been raised. One is from a form of what are the myths, especially amongst women and young girls, surrounding the use of contraceptives? And secondly, what is the correct use of contraceptives? So maybe let me start with Dr. Frederick. Thank you, Tamima. Uh, my name is Dr. Fred Kairidia. Uh, I think these are legitimate concerns about use of contraceptives because there is what we know and there is what is the fact about them. Uh, let me say that there is no contraceptives that fits everyone and they need to be assessed and to identify what favors you. So it is true that some methods can make someone bleed a lot depending on a number of factors, but also the same methods can be very useful to another section of the, of the users. So that is why before initiating, it is always advisable that uh, you visit a qualified person for assessment, the initial assessment, and you are placed on what is suitable for you. So when you say, and ideally just for the common folk, yeah, and the average young person, mm -hmm. when you say visit a qualified person, like if I had to ask Angela, if I had to ask Stella, you know, they seem like brilliant, young, well-educated young ladies. But if you wanted to find out about contraceptives, where do you think you could visit? Do you know? I, I can go and visit a facility. Uh -huh. But first of all, for me, I started with the Google. I ask Google what is contraceptives, if there are some examples, what are their effects? Yeah. Um... Back at where I stay, there's always the first option. Unapata msea nenda kwa chemist kwanza. Why? Why? Una pige sabu ya kuenda kwa the local facility. Una wana kutakuwa na judgment. Perhaps uneza patana na mtu anajua mamako na umekuja kupata contraceptives. Una wana kutakuwa na judgment. 
So when you say go to a chemist, I assume nile chemist iko mbali na kwenu? Yeah. Definitely. So the issue with the facilities is that a, the, the people who are there they are older than you, older women and they are not youth friendly. They are not Most youth friendly. Are, yeah, they are not youth friendly. Ukifika hapo and if you show them the ID, they can calculate your age at the moment. Mm -hmm. So kuna kwa round hii una range 18 to 22 hapo. There's a way they start treating you mbaka una feel you're uncomfortable even with inquiring for their services. So it's like wana kudharau. Unaona sema mmearibika mapema sana. Okay, yeah. it seems like you've been through that to one of your friends. Has anyone had that experience as a young lady? Like, yes, Tamima, I knew where to go get the service. Like, ini nilifika uko, he? Mm. Never again. I'm Jane Asiko, and I'm 20 years old. Okay, I thought, like, I had to go to, the, to a health facility. But when I reached there, actually, it happened to me. I was like... What should I do for me not to get like pregnant and stuff? And there was a an old lady. I was speaking to an old lady. So she shouted to at me, like, when you totom dogo sana, ni nino nataka kujua. And ukai kwe nungoji skuta kuja kutolewa na mze. And I was like, si ni me kuja tu kupata advice. Okay, lini heart, and at the end of the day, mimi honestly says enda hosi kuliza advice. Unfortunately, that remains the experience that a lot of young women actually go through at the hands of public uh, facilities that are supposed to be offering these services and also just to provide information. Well, they still want to come here on Real Talk on this topic. Please don't go too far. We'll be right back. My husband was against family plan. He always told me I'll have children Deformities. So already I'm as well as once once. So already to establish all the things. It'll be fire too, kiddo. So the most common uh, uh, complication that you'll face is you will get pregnant. Welcome back to Real Talk. Now, remember, our conversation on today's topic continues. We're saying contraceptives, this is what you need to know. So early on, my guests shared their experience or lack of with contraceptives. And you had the feedback from the audience, especially where young people are concerned. They feel that there's a lot of judgment, especially from the healthcare system. So I just want to introduce Nas Jail. Nas Jail is 32. I wanted to put that thought into perspective before I introduce my next guests, who are older women who have experienced contraceptives, and they'll share with us what their experiences were like. So Nas Jail. So, Nasjal is someone who works within the healthcare system. You had what young women especially feel about the kind of reception they get at government-run health facilities. My name is Jail Otieno. I work under Nairobi City County, Makadara Health Center, along Jogo Road. Contraceptives, our health facility, we offer youth-friendly services. The stigma is there. They were, somebody said the old nurses. The stigma, when I was growing up, I didn't know about contraceptives. My mom used to say, don't use those, even a condom. I was abstaining. But now, the world is, we are in digital. The world is changing. And we normally do sensitization amongst our staff. The, we try to remove the stigma of contracept, contraceptive. Any woman is allowed to use contraceptive. When they walk in, we should give them to avoid the under-table abortions, misconceptions, and the myths, right? Yes, yeah, so in our facility, you are free to walk, Makadara Health Center. Those people are afraid, come look for me. You'll find very good nurses there. We will offer any that you want. Come, and we also include boy child, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's not only for women, men, you are allowed, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Nasja. Okay, so I'll introduce my next guest, Felista Zinduge, who is 39 years. She's a mother of five kids. She has used contraceptives before had negative experiences with some. Please help me welcome her to the show. <laughs> Felistas, karibu kwenye Real Talk. Thank you. So nasikia wewe ni mama watoto watano. Yeah. Na naambiwa ukianza, wewe na mzee mlikuwa mmesema si tunataka watoto watatu tu. Yes. Lakini ukajipata pale na almost double. 
So come on, Mama, to turn on your How is it? It's too hard. Uh, economically, health-wise, na hii maisha ya leo. So, watu tuwa kuna miaka ngapi? Wakwanza kwa 21 years, wapili 19 years, watatu 18 years, waine 16 years, na watano 12 years. So, kuna pali pali inaitagwa hile, ikakua ikakua hile staircase. Mama wana penaga kusema ni staircase. Eh, iyo, ya kwanza ya pili ya tatu staircase. So, naambiwa hapa, ukianza pale mwanzoni, eh, Wewe ulikuwa umepata firstborn, alafu firstborn akiwa na miezi nane. Yes, Ukagundua tena umepata mimba. mimba. Mm. So hiyo wakati ulikuwa unatumia family planning yoyote? No, no. I was not using any family planning. My husband was against family planning. He always told me I'll have children with deformities. I'll have, I'll have heavy bleeding and health complications. So I didn't know more about family planning. I was in it. Kwa mba mzea kisema, amesema. Yes, amesema. Mm -hmm. So kama sasa pale ukuna mtoto wa kwanza, alafu anamezi nani. Mm -hmm. Kwa mba unambiwa tena, ah, unamimba. Mtu, mtu usikia aje saizo? Unasikia umejichukia. Sa, unaurumia uyu mtoto wa kwanza. Bado, iyo time, atukua, ulikuwa naambiwa ukatishe mtoto kunyonyesha. Juu ya mimba ya pili sasa. Juu ya mimba ya pili. Sasa unaurumia huyu mtoto, huyu mtoto wangu nitamfanya nini? Paka una introduce mtoto kwa maziwa, kwa botro. Mapema sasa. Mapema sasa. Do jitarishe. By the time mwenzake anafika, mm -hmm. hanyonyi, do yu mwenzake anyonye. Mm -hmm. Mapili, haka ingia. Kama wakwanza kumwaka na nusu. Alafu badu, si kutumia family planning. Mzee amekata. Mzee amekata. Niko kwa mzee amekata, si tumi. Uyo apili akiwa mwaka na nusu, nikashika mba ya tatu. So saizo ukona ule wa kwanza akona? Almost sasa three years. Ehe, wapili mwaka na nusu, nusu watatu ndo uyo anafika. Anafika. Sa kama mama, mama mdogo hapo tena, mm. what is going through your mind? Unahisi aje? Sa wakati nilipata mtoto wa tatu, I had to decide on my own. Nikasema hapa mambo imekuwa mbaya, na mzee ataki family planning ako, ako again is kabisa. Nika sema, hapa lazima niende. Iyo wakati nilikuwa sana nimeanza kufunguka akili ukienda health facilities, wanapea na health talk about family planning, I had a clue. Hivyo sasa nika funguka macho, nika sema, I have to decide on my own. Hapo ndiyo nika enda, nika anza kudungwa injectables depo. Na sasa zilo, nika sema sasa mimi kama mama nimeamua, nikono watoto watatu, aa. Nataka, nataka kufunga hii maneno ya watoto. Yeah. Ulimwambia mzee ama ulifanya tu kisiri? Nilifanya kisiri. Na hapo ndiyo nilideside nataka depo. Miu depo kidugwa ni hivyo na ni hivyo. Mm -hmm. Hata jua kama nimedungwa. Hata jua tutu. Maisha inaendelea. Na mzee hakugundua? Hakugundua. Lakini within two years, depo ikaanza kuletea shida. Nikaanza kuwa na sporting. Nika gain a lot of weight. Blood pressure yangu ikakuwa juu. So I, I had to, to stop. Sumamishe. Mm. Sasa ukaacha kutumia depo. Mm. Bado mzee ata ajui saizo mama anatumia kitu. Ajui chochote. Anasikia po sando ukapata mtoto wako wa nene. Nkapata mtoto wangu wa ine. Kupata mtoto wangu wa ine sasa nikasema naanza kumeza tembe. Nini limeza tembe for almost three, three years mm -hmm. and some months. Alafu wapo nikaanza kusau, mi mwenyewe. Najipata two days, zija meza ile tembe. Nikaanza kuwa na sporting. Nikaenda health facility. Wakani pea hizo COCs. Kaniambia, niende ni meze nikifuatanisha for 21 days. Sporting taisha. Nikaenda nika meza. Lakini after kumeza, nika sikia aa. -a. Siko nomu. Yani, I could, symptoms, side effects, mm. I kupeleki vizuri. Mm. Kuenda kufanyo apprentice test, nilijipata nikona mimba ya miezi tatu. Na ya fifth born sasa. Baada ile mara ya kwanza ilu ulifanya kisiri, mm. afterwards, uliku unambia mzi sasa mzimi na chukua hizi tembe. Ama badu uliku unaficha? Hapo nilimuelezea. Juhu hata yeye aliona hawa toto wa metosha. Sasa watano. Sasa tukajipata watano nduwa uyu. Atukasema lazima tuzae tulee. Lakini after mtoto wa tano, 
Hapo tukaamua nitumia UCD coil. Nikawekwa coil ya trough yes. Is due na tolewa June. Na June hii mwaka. Mm, na, so nikitolewa naweka ingine ya trough ma trough yes. So kama hivi leo mm. we na mzee mm. eh, ukijipata pengine mnafikiria mnafikiria kuongezea familia ama mnasema ah tano ah, imetosha. Tumetosha. So you know there are other permanent ways mm. of family planning. As a woman, can you consider any of those something like yani ile kufunga tubes? Najua umeisikia hiyo kwa wamama. Haya nimesikia. Hiyo ni kitu unaweza consider? I can like la, lakini for now I'm comfortable with IUCD. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now I want to introduce my next guest, Margaret Nthambi, who is 31 years old. She says she was on a contraceptive. Just to be clear, her contraceptive of choice was P2, but she still got pregnant. Please help me welcome her to the show. <laughs> Margaret, karibu kwenye Real Talk. Santi. Unu kuna swag maka kwa eyebrows. Santi. Eh? <laughs> Unasema ulikuwa natumia contraceptive. Yes. Ulikuwa natumia contraceptive gani? Emergency pill. Yes, Iyo. that one. Eh. So hiyo ndio ulikuwa natumia. Ulikuwa na meza kama mara ngapi? Okay. So leo na mezwa once once once. So already to establish we liba ili backfire tu kidogo. Na kwa wiki tsemo ulikuwa na meza mara ngapi? Aswa ni meza mara mingi. Uh -huh. Once once unajua pia naogopa juu. Naogopa juu ya kitu moja. Usiona ni dangerous juu na tumia once. Unajua venye maandiko kwa nini? Kwa hiyo package. Use, yeah. So nilikuwa natumia once once. Lakini bado so, moja ili backfire tu siku moja. Uh -huh. Mm. Na after it backfire, what was running through your mind? Because I'm sure unaangalia, eh, si kitu imeandikuwa ni emergency. Eh, uh -huh. nikuwa na, nikuwa na stress. Juhu nikuwa anuante, nikuwa nime plan. Uh -huh. After it, nikuwa nime jaribu kuchunga, nisipate. Na ukimwambia baba mtoto, na nakuambia si, eh, si nilikuambia umeze. Baba mtoto alikuwa mbaya. Alinaimbea tafta baba mtoto mwingine. Sao unajua alikuwa ni lawyer. Bala kuniambia, oh, fanya hivya. Alinaimbea tafta baba mtoto. Sao nikuwa na, na jaribu kuni hit and run. Toroka, hivyo ndo niliambiwa. So, na ya okay. nitoroka, kaenda kama aliendaga? Eh, hey, hivyo tu. Na, uki, 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 if you think back, pale kama couple, sazile maprenzi ilikuwa sasa imechacha kuchacha vizuri, mulikuwa mbunge about birth control contraceptive? No, 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 mbunge hizo. So, ilikuwa mbunge gana aji, anajua, eh, hey, ukitoka hapa, endo, endo uchukue kitu. Eh. Hey. So, alikuwa na kuambega, ukitoka hapa, we enda ume? Umeze. Umeze. Sani kumo explain your story, ndo aliambia, eh. Hey. Aku kuamini, ya kona nikawa hey, unafunga. Eh, saku hey. I want to introduce our experts. We have Nurse Jail, we have Dr. Frederick, and Dr. Aoma, who are both OBGYNs. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Adipo, who is an OBGYN. <laughs> so, Dr. Umeskia, I think we have here two different experiences, which in a lot of ways are classic of the contemporary Kenyan woman. So probably let's start with uh, Margaret. Because Yaki Anasema, her contraceptive of choice was the emergency pill until it gave her an emergency. First of all, let me begin by saying that uh, reproductive health, especially in the youth, is a matter that is close to my heart. And as it has, it has been said earlier, contraceptives, all of them, apart from abstinence, have a failure rate. Now, E-pill is an emergency contraceptive to be used as an emergency. Yani, you cannot keep having emergencies Monday to Sunday. Monday to Sunday. Emergency ni once a year, isn't it? So if you find yourself using an uh, e-pill three times in a month, then that is not your contraceptive. Find another contraceptive that is good for you. So e-pill should be an emergency contraceptive and should be used for that emergency what are the dangers of overusing and abusing the e-pill? So the most common uh, uh, complication that you'll face is you will get pregnant. You didn't want to get pregnant, but you will get pregnant. Then our contraceptives, e-pill is a hormonal contraceptive, meaning that it goes and interferes with the hormones in the body so that you don't Maybe ovulation doesn't take place so that you don't get pregnant. So when that hom hormone is, you expose your body constantly to that hormone, then it dysregulates your system in a way. 
Is there a link between the e pills and ectopic pregnancies? Yes, studies have shown that there's a link between e pill and ectopic pregnancy. Maybe just for the layman, please explain to us what is an ectopic pregnancy and how does that e pill contribute to it, especially later on in life when the young woman is now stable and they're now at a place where they want to have a family. What is an ectopic pregnancy first? Ectopic pregnancy it's, is a pregnancy that is outside the uterine cavity. Normal pregnancies will take place in the uterus, but anything that occurs, any pregnancy that occurs outside the uterus is termed as an ectopic pregnancy. Most of these pregnancies will occur within the fallopian tube. That is the most common site for ectopic pregnancy. And because the EP will slow down the movement of the egg when it comes from the ovary, some anatomy is important here when it comes from the ovary. So when it slows down that movement, then the sperm finds it in the tube. And that is why you have ectopic pregnancy occurring. When ectopic pregnancy occurs, then it means it has to go and get removed. And sometimes we have to, the tubes are kind of sometimes affected in a way. And therefore, sometimes in future, when the, once the tubes are affected, sometimes in future you want to get pregnant and you cannot. And right now on that, because I think we had a lot of young girls, and even Felista Zalituambia, pengine pale hapo awali, she was not too convinced about using contraceptives because, you know, women, we talk amongst each other. Unasikia, oh, utanona, oh, you'll bleed heavily, oh, eat a kupea cancer. All these are some of the myths that are out there. Because what I'm hearing, with this one E contraceptive, it does have a risk because it is an emergency. So if it is abused, it can actually end up causing other adverse health effects to your reproductive organs. However, at the same time, there are other forms of contraceptives that are safe, which now the people who are abusing the e pill can get on. There are so many forms of contraceptives. We cannot just even talk about them and finish them in this sitting. And uh, as my colleague has said, there are youth-friendly facilities. Even in Kenyatta National Hospital, you'll find a youth-friendly facility where all your contraceptive questions will be answered. You'll be given a choice of a lot of contraceptives that are long-term and short-term, that are temporary, and I don't think you'd want a permanent one. But all those choices are given, they are available, and you can choose from a variety. The best thing to do is not to ask your friend and not to ask your colleague. Ask a qualified health uh, specialist in a youth-friendly facility. Okay, on that note, we'd like to take a very quick break. Still more to come here on Real Talk. Don't go too far. As you can see me, I've gained a lot of weight. I was not like this. I had like a flat tummy. I was all, eh? Unapindua shingo kwangaliya But somebody will tell you, I want to postpone pregnancy for three months to do an exam. It's free of charge. Did you guys know that? Free it's free of, of charge. charge. Welcome back to Real Talk. Remember that you can join the conversation on today's topic via the hashtag hash Real Talk with Tanima. Let me know what your views, feedback, and comments are. Right now, I have on stage with me Dr. Frederick Kairithia, who's an OBGYN, as well as Dr. Auma Adipo. So we will be taking questions on this topic. And if you need any clarity, hit me up, and we'll pass the questions along. But before that, I'd like to introduce Caroline Nyambura, who is 22 years old. She says that she was on the pill, but unfortunately, she developed complications. Caroline? Well, hello, Tamima. My Hi. name is Caroline Nyambura. And last December, the festive season, as always, for us, my teens, at that hype moment, you want to be all there. So I decided to use pills. I have lots of older friends with me. So instead of asking my mom directly, because I feel kind of not really open to go and ask about easy my contraceptives and everything, Wound you nakimbilia because they're like my sisters. So I'm asking, I'm hearing some of them say, Min kona coil, oh, min medunga shindano ya mezi tattoo. And I'm like, I don't like injections. I'm not willing to go under the process of the coil because, as we all know, it takes something to be 
inside your body. So I decided to go for pills. The emergency contraceptive. Yes. So I use it and after I go take it. And definitely my parents don't know because it's not something you go tell them I'm doing. Unaji protect So I am here. As you can see me, I've gained a lot of weight. I was not like this. I had like a flat tummy. I was all, eh? Unapindua shingo kwa ngaleo msichana. Like now I'm just all. Nikani mongeza some weight from somewhere else. Na hema, na skia, na choka. So I was just like, yes, I do want to know what can work for me, but who do I ask? Okay, I think maybe, let me throw this one to Dr. Oma because you spoke around this. There's a question I want to ask her before. Have you taken a pregnancy test? No. You haven't. Dr. Oma, take it now. Oh my <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. So you're asking about where do you get the information of an appropriate contraceptive for you? Yes. Well, uh, like we said earlier, they are youth friendly clinics. And I'd want you to, when you're going for contraceptive as a youth, ensure you go to a youth friendly clinic. Because we've had complaints of people going to clinics and being turned away and being ah, wananza kusomewa, this is not how to live as a youth. There are youth friendly uh, clinics where uh, the specialists who work there have been trained on offering services to the youth. And as a youth, it is your right to get a contraceptive of your choice that works for you. So the e pill might not be working for you. And what you need to do is just visit a specialist in a youth friendly clinic, discuss, be provided with a variety of what we have, and then select the best. And Dr. Me. Frederick, probably on the symptoms that she mentioned, I'm mm amenona, -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. So are those symptoms from that pill that she took? Most likely, yes, because there's a clear point in time where it is started. Uh, it's good to mention that e pill contains uh, hormones, estrogen, I mean, uh, steroids, and one of the side effects is actually retaining a lot of water in the body and uh, gaining weight as a side effect. Uh, it can be reversed, but um, she might need to be evaluated. Remember, you've asked a question about if she's taken a pregnancy test, because that is the first thing to check first. And uh, if there's a pregnancy, then the management changes. But yes, the effect that she has can be rectified. Okay. Yeah. So are you willing to take a pregnancy test? Yes. Oh, you, you seem to be like, mm, no, Tamima, I can't be pregnant. I took the pill. Yes. But you heard her saying that the pill is not 100% effective. Well, I'd... Now that they are the specialist, I'm not the specialist, obviously. I'd love to take a pregnancy test, but maybe in a private place when I'm just alone and my boo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, maybe, Dr. Harry, and to the both of you, let me just clarify for us, because you mentioned that there are hormonal contraceptives. Mm -hmm. So which ones are the hormonal ones? What are the effects? And which ones are the non-hormonal ones? And what are the effects? So uh, w we start broadly by dividing uh, the contraceptives into the temporary ones and permanent ones, as you mentioned earlier. So among the temporary ones is where the hormonals fit. The hormonal ones are both pills, the oral pills that are uh, starting from the e pills that's most commonly been taken here. And uh, we have combined oral contraceptive pills. Those are, those are the ones that are taken for 20, uh, 21 days straight with a seven day break. And then we have the depot injection. We also have some uh, uh, IUCD that are coated with hormones. And the most common one in the market is called Mirena, mm -hmm. yes. So we have, and I just collected a couple of sample names from our viewers. I had Depo, Jadel, No Plant, Implanon. Yes, also those, those ones are long-term contraceptive, Jadel and Implanon and No Plant. They are implanted, uh, they're they are, they are, they are normally given by the healthcare provider. They are, it's a um, five-minute procedure of implanting the hormone beneath your, uh, beneath your skin and it stays there for some time. Uh, depending on which ones you're using from three to five years. So how would a woman make a choice? Whether to go hormonal or non-hormonal, what influences it? I think we subject them to what is called, there's a scoring system, uh, what we call eligibility criteria. So it's a bit more technical, 
but the main issue is that most people are obtaining contraceptives from chemists and shops which are run by people who are not who do not have technical information so they are skipping a very vital step so their main objective is actually to make sales because yeah. you'll say i sold five pieces of p2 that is their main objective but somebody will go through you and discuss uh, like we want to know do you have medical conditions do you have allergies to certain uh, items like copper somebody mentioned about IUCD also known as copper tea uh, do you have conditions like diabetes asthma uh, are you on other medications which might interact have you used something before which which has uh, complicated but more importantly are you able to afford the method because they come at a cost, especially in the private sector. And how long do you want to postpone getting pregnant? Like for young ones, maybe 10, 15 years. But somebody will tell you, I want to postpone pregnancy for three months to do an exam. So you see that each, each, each person has their need customized for you to get what is relevant for you. Okay. Yeah. I want to introduce Celestine, who works with women in the community. And she also offers a lot of counseling when it comes to reproductive health services. So what I want Celestine to just basically put for us into perspective is especially the cost element that you have mentioned. Because again, Mfukoyakopia, it will determine what it is that you're using. So at the community level, in your opinion, what, do you, what are you seeing is most preferred, especially by Wamama? Okay, like me, I get a lot of challenges with your mama because I normally deal with them. Even I normally give them pills in my house. So I'm a health work. I work with community health work. So it's not easy. Mtu anakuja na kuambia unajua nini? Nilikuwa natumia dao inaniharibikia. Sasa nitafanyaje? So you have to sit down with them then you discuss iko aji inakupeleka aji I'm bleeding, I'm doing this. Mimi hata really mido imekamu chini, imekuwa chini. Si feel anything with my mze. So what can I do at any other? Oh, change the, 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 the method that we are using for, for one itawakad. Huh? So mostly, me, I, I advise them to use pills. You know, you're mostly me mwapea. And you're mostly na free power to me kwa sabu hata miutu mia iyo. So it's cost effective in your opinion, it's affordable. But at the same time, with a disclaimer from Dr. Yeah, Tari yeah, that yeah. everyone's body is different, yeah, yeah. so they must also still go to a health facility, yeah. have a discussion with a medical expert yeah, yeah. before now you start taking the pills. Yeah. Okay. So I also want to ask a question because you mentioned that depending on someone's age, they can decide to use it for three months, six months, five years, ten years. Now, we've seen women now, and this is one of the biggest myths around the contraceptives, that they can make you infertile. But at the same time, we've seen the struggles of women who actually come and say, now I want to have a baby, but I'm struggling. And a lot of them will usually now go and link it back to, I was on this contraceptive for 10 years, 15 years. I think uh, most of them are reversible. There's only one, uh, some which are non-reversible, what she called uh, permanent. What we need to understand is because the hormones interact with the body and block certain processes which which cause fertility, it takes a while for them to go back or the body to clear the effect. So most, most of them will have what we call return to fertility interval, which may vary from method to method. Mostly nanomono methods, you don't wait. And if there is a wait, then you explore other reasons which might contribute. Um, it is true, people tend to blame contraceptives because that's the only external thing. But also note that there are people who get uh, into relationships and they're absolutely on nothing and stay for several months without conception, even if they have not used anything. So where that, where that is a concern, kindly explore discussing with a health worker. Uh, she mentioned that uh, in the city county facilities, there are actually some very nice youth facility, friendly facilities Please, for the young um, users, you are advised to, to visit and check. And maybe just to bring in that, Jail, what is the cost, for instance, at your facility? It's free of charge. Did you guys know that? Free it's free of, of charge. charge? Yes. <laughs> Has 
anyone gone to a chemist na ukapewa free of charge? Clap. Who pays at the chemist? Everybody pays at the chemist. So we are encouraging you, please, you know, you've heard from them that there are those facilities where you can find young people like themselves who will not judge you. And at the end of the day, why pay for something that is naturally your right simply by being a Kenyan citizen? Okay, I want to involve my audience right now just to pick a couple of questions from them, which will address to the experts. Hello, Tamima. Hello. Uh, my name is James Otieno. I wanted to introduce the other aspect because we've looked at uh, the effects of contraceptives on young girls. But for men, for young boys and men, like when I was a young boy, uh, to me the issue of contraceptive was to prevent diseases, con contracting diseases. I remember when I did my A-levels and I was going to university, we went out that night and we had a lot of fun and I contracted STD. Now. From that point onwards, for me, contraceptive was a must to prevent myself from contracting further diseases. Which one specifically did you use? Condoms. It was the cheapest and the most available, readily available for me. Yes. Okay. Do you guys agree with that statement? Clap if you agree. When are we? Okay. And still on that, I want to ask Tectari a question. Because, like he said, we've leaned a lot on women. Because in this world, you know, they say it's a man's world, whereby mwanamke una, una responsibility nyingi, even contraceptive. Mm -hmm. In our community, in our society, a lot of the times it's the woman's responsibility. But how can men within the family unit also be part of the use of contraceptives? I think one by uh, directly, there, there are costs which are involved. We Remember we said the actual commodity is free, but you have to go there to the facility because they are not given door to door. So facilitating such processes, encouraging the women, not being too, uh, too judgmental about it. And sometimes uh, there is a talk about contraceptives affecting sex sexual life, which to a large extent is actually psychological and it's male driven. So if they are there within the process of counseling and uh, seeking the service, I think it will help. Outside of the use of condoms, are there other forms of contraceptives available to men? Yes, there are two more. Um, you are aware there is a procedure called vasectomy where the, the small tubes are tied. And that, that's a permanent uh, procedure. It's equivalent to tubal ligation in women. But also there is um, um, there's a, new, a new method in the market which has just uh, landed, and I think it's not as popular, akin to what ladies take the pills. Which method is this? It's a male pill. So it's actually now, very new in the market. What they're actually doing, and ladies, I want you guys to listen to this statement, and we agree here. Eh? You're saying that there is a pill yes. that men can take. Yeah. But still, like you said, uh, it's, the uptake is very slow. Yeah. Simply because we have been culturized that Ioni kazi our mama. Yes. So if I had to ask the men in this room, you trust your girlfriends, your wives, that mukiagana chukua contraceptive atachukua. Clap if you agree. And for the ladies, if today the, you, we were to say, okay, for the next one month, no woman should be on a contraceptive, let's trust the guys to take the pills. Would you trust them? <laughs> why? I want to hear why. <laughs> Maybe that's why the pill is not moving. <laughs> comment. I'm seeing their comments on this side. Oh, no, um, most of the men they don't trust. Come on, is to me uh, any contraceptives. They wanna say manga. Ah, iyo ni kazi yawa mama. So to kisemati to achili ati wana nini wa wana ume watu miye family planning. Uh, hi, it's Mambo it's end of Talk on a baby boom. Ay, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hi, Tamaiwa. Um, I'll also say, kuna hii trend ya patriarchy. Um, imekuwa ni kama, like, tumegro tukijua men are the head of the families. But while we are talking about inclusivity, utapata mwanume anonapana, this is not my thing, inabidi ya meachi ya demu of which in order to succeed, sisi wote, we must be include, included. Okay, who represents the men? And tell us, why is it that men, 
in your opinion like i ataka pili iko mimi sioni wanaume wakichukua hiyo pill thank you tamima i'm soja james from my experience mm -hmm. i have to nitaongelelea kidogo ndio ili ujue ya kwamba itakuwa itakuwa ngumu kwa wanaume wengine wengine wanaweza kufuatilia kama mimi nilitoka shule nikiwa nimepigwa na dress pill sana nikaamua niende nipitie kwa kwa chemistry nikachukua condom kind to my girl siku kumbuka ya kwamba nilinunua ile condom all of a sudden kijana akatokea lakini nilikuwa nimejipanga ya kwamba nitatumia hiyo condom si kweli hapo hivi itakuja wanaume we, we tend up to forget huwa tunasahau kama venye huu unasahau kunywa dawa yako yenye umepewa na daktari tunasahau tu kwa hivyo utajipata tu hujatumia na umeenda umefanya hiyo kitendo if i had to ask if you had like you mentioned that sometimes depending on the woman's body contraceptives can have adverse effects what if your wife is having adverse effects to the contraceptive and you as a man now can be the one who's doing the family planning for the family would you consider it guys bado akuna okay <laughs> so it shows that there's still a lot of communication and conversation around this topic that needs to happen we need to talk to our we need to talk to our youth both male and female empower them with the correct use of sex first of all the correct use of contraceptives help them understand the dangers and if you're a young person please make a point visit a health facility get empowered kama ni mama pale pengine unashindwa kuongea na mzee you know fa, fa, go, to, go to the health facility you had a testimonial here whereby sometimes at the end of the day you may have to make tough decisions on behalf of your family well that's it from me tamima until next time thank you so much for tuning in Special thanks to E-Plus for medic and ambulance services.